everyone. So today I'm going to be sharing with you how I took the hazy mountain panel and made it into a quilt. So the quilt is going to be using a pattern inspired by an attic window quilt and it's going to be very customizable to you with a brick border. I really love how this quilt turned out and I cannot wait to share with you the steps I went through to put it together. Now I am going to be linking in the description below a link to my blog post where I shared pictures and steps along the way to put this quilt together just to make it a little bit easier for you hopefully if you would like to make this quilt. And if you would like to make this quilt I do want to let you know that in my fabric shop online I do have all the supplies to make this quilt. So the supply list will also be in the description of this video. So let's get started. Okay so I'm going to show you how to take the hazy mountain panel. This is a panel from Clothworks from the Scandinavian winter line. I'm going to show you how to take this and make it into a window view quilt. And I have some extra fabrics here to do that with. I'm going to put them out and I'll show you what they all are. So we have the light gray snowflakes here. We have teal, light navy, light denim, and some white fabric. And I'll put all of the fabric amounts that you will need down in the description of this video as well. So these fabrics are all available in my shop, which will be linked as well. So to start with the panel, I'm gonna cut the, the panel into six each equal squares. I'm gonna do this very specifically though, because I want everything to line up really well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this salvage end, the side that is by the moon. I think it's the moon. <laughs> it's the, the, I'm going to cut that side nice and straight and even. So I'm going to do that by folding the panel into fourths. And I'm going to keep that moon up so that I can make sure to see it. So I'm just going to do this because it makes it a little more manageable for me to view on my cutting mat. So I just want one nice straight side to work with. It'll help me keep everything even. And so we're going to be cutting six 18 by 18 inch squares out of this panel to form the different window panes. So I'm gonna cut a nice even straight line here. And I'm doing it on this side because I want to ensure I keep the moon in the, in the window quilt that we're making. It's a very nice feature on the quilt and I felt like the other end, if we lost some of it, it's a lot of extra trees and mountains and the water area. And I feel like losing some of that, it would be, I mean, I don't want to lose any of it, obviously, but I felt like that end would be the least sad. <laughs> so now I'm just going to square up the top of the quilt. And to do that, I only need to fold it in half. And then I'm going to line up the fold on one of my lines on my mat and trim it up. Now, once I get this end squared, I'm going to start cutting this into strips. All right, so now that I have that trimmed, I am going to cut three 18 inch strips from this panel and then I will cut those strips into each strip into two 18 inch squares. So I will ultimately have six 18 inch squares from this panel. All right, so now you're going to take each of those strips that you cut down to 18 inches and you're going to take the side that was squared up first and that is going to be your starting point so I like to line that side up right along the edge of my 
mat where all the numbers start at number one. So my numbers start at number one over here. I like to line it up there, make sure it's lined up on the other lines on the mat. And then I'm going to cut it to an 18 inch square. So the nice thing is, is that I know that this is my first square in the window on the top row. So if you need to keep track of them, I'm going to put them up on my design wall just to keep track of them. But you could put a marker for like number one if you need to. And then I'll move the rest of the panel over and I'll cut my next piece. So like I said, you are going to have some fabric left over on the sides of this and it's going to be quite a bit. So it's really pretty fabric. You could always cut it up, save it, cut it up into smaller pieces and use them in a scrappy quilt. So don't throw it away. I'm going to save it for a scrappy project. So then you have your block, your square two. And then I'm going to do that with that middle section as well. And the nice thing is, is that since you have that side that's squared up, you know which side you're going to trim your first square from. So I'm going to line it up at the edge and I'll cut my square from it. So I'm going to keep doing that with all of the sections of this panel. And once I get these all squared up, we'll look at our next steps. So here are the cuts that we will be using in the next step. So of my navy color, I have six 2.5 by 18 inch strips, and then I have three three inch squares. Now with the light denim, I have six 2.5 inch by 18 inch rectangles, and in that same color, I have three three inch squares. All right, so to make the half square triangles, which we will need six of them, what you'll want to do is mark corner to corner on the wrong side of three of the same square. So once you get them marked, you can put them them right sides together and then sew a quarter inch seam along both sides of the line. So note that I am putting the contrasting squares together. So I have a light square with one of the darker squares. So on all of them, sew a quarter inch away from the drawn line. All right, so now that I have all three of these sets sewn, I'm going to trim down the center of them right along that drawn line. And I'm using the Trucker Timmer, Tucker Trimmer 1 because I'm going to be using this also to square up these half square triangles. So once I got them all cut, I am going to press them all to the dark side. So I'm just going to set the seam and then kind of use my fingers to move them to the side a little bit and then add the heat. So I'm using these two contrasting colors because they kind of pull in from the, the panel in general, but they stand out enough so that I have this dark accent that will help add depth along with the lighter color and make it look like the window actually has some dimension to it. All right, so now I'm going to show you trimming one of these. So on the Tucker trimmer, there is a side that has whole numbers that is designated by the full circle. And then there is a side that has 
halves. So one and a half, two and a half. I'm going to be trimming these down to two and a half inches. So I'm going to be using the side with the half circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up along that center line going down the center of the ruler along the diagonal. I'm going to line it up along the seam that is here on my half square triangle. And once I get it lined up, I'm going to make sure that the two and a half inch line, I'm going to make sure that I stay within it on all sides so that when I trim away, I have a nice perfect little half square. So I'll turn it and then that side that is trimmed will line up perfectly along the two and a half dotted line. Make sure that my diagonal is along the seam. And when everything is lined up, I can trim the other side. So now I have this perfect half square triangle. So what this will do, I'm just going to show you really quick and then I'm going to trim everything else up. So when I lay this panel down, I'll put the darker rectangle along the left side, the lighter along the bottom, and then over here I have this half square triangle that's going to be kind of my mitered corner, but I cheated and did a half square triangle so I don't have to miter this angle here. And that will just add the depth perception to the window for my panel here. So what I will do is I'm going to sew the half square triangles to the bottom strip. You put a pin in here. And then I'm going to sew the darker strip onto the left side of all six of my panels. Whenever I'm sewing longer strips, I like to put pins in just to help reduce the, hopefully reduce any stretching that may happen. So I'll add a few more along there. So I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam along the side here, press it, and then I'll be able to add the bottom on that will already have the half square triangle sewed to it. So let me go ahead and show that to you. So now that I have all my window segments finished, so I have the darker sashing sewn on one side and the lighter along the bottom with that, with the half square triangle in the corner. So it adds that depth to make it look like a window. If you can see here, I have all of them marked so that I know which order they go in and I have all six of them finished. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be putting a white sashing strip to, um, between each of the rows. So let me show you what that will look like. So you'll need three step sashing strips for this step. And the sashing is going to go between each of the blocks in the rows. So these sashing strips measure 20, 2.5 inches by 20 inches. So it's going to get sewn right between, for example, on this row, we have square one and square two, and the sashing will get sewn right between it. And we'll do the same with each of the rows. So I'm just gonna put this right sides together, put some pins in, sew a quarter inch seam, and then I'll add on the second block.
All right, so that is what your square should look like now. I know it's hard, like I can't get it all in the camera because <laughs> these are such big blocks, but that sashing just goes right between the squares. And I'm gonna do that with each of the rows. So I'll take square three and four and I'll sew a sashing between it in just the same manner as long as well as with blocks five and six. So for the next step, you are going to want to cut four strips from your lightest fabric. For me, I'm using white and you'll cut them four strips, 2.5 inches wide by width of fabric. And then you can trim them down to the width your rows are. So for me, I trimmed mine to about 41 and a half inches. These are gonna go between each row of the quilt and on the top and bottom of the quilt. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take these strips and I'm going to sew one to the top of each of my rows to start. So I'll pin them in place, right sides together, and then sew a quarter inch seam. So to get the best fit for you and how you sew, it's best to cut these strips a little bit longer. If you like to cut everything first, then measure your row and trim your strips down to be the exact size of your rows. So once I get these all pinned, I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam to sew the strips in place press them and then I'll add my, start sewing all my rows together. All right, so now that I have the strip sewn onto the top of all the rows, I'm going to start bringing the row one and row two together. So you can see I have the sashing strip on top of row two as well. So what I'm going to do is bring row one and two with those strips right sides together. I'm gonna line it up, put some pins in, and sew a quarter inch seam. See, I'm gonna take these sashings and just kind of make sure that they are lined up and then pin out from there. So for the last third row, we already sewed the sashing onto the top. So now we're going to sew one of these sashing strips to the bottom row. So just like with all the rest of them, we're gonna bring it right sides together, pin it and sew a quarter inch seam. Once I sew these two together, the row one and two together and this strip on, I'm just going to have one more seam to sew, bringing the rest of the quilt together. So that row one and two combination, I'm gonna sew here onto this. All right, so now that row one and row two are joined together by the strip through the 
we're going to add that onto the final row. And that row did get the stripped sewn onto the bottom of it. So I'm gonna bring them right sides together. And again, I'm gonna make sure those middle strips, those kind of sashing strips are kind of, not gonna, you know, it may not be perfect, but I at least wanna make sure that they're pretty close to being lined up. And then I'm gonna add a bunch of pins and sew a quarter inch seam. All right, so now that we have all those rows pieced together, you can really see the quilt come together. Now all we need to do is add two side borders on, and these are 2.5 inches by the length that your quilt is at this point. So I had to piece some strips together. So you can see here, I added some fabric onto mine to get it to about 67 inches for my quilt. So you'll just wanna take that measurement to see how long you need yours for what your seam allowances were and all of that. So about 67 inches is what it came out to for me. So I'm gonna trim these, pin them onto the sides of the quilt and sew a quarter inch seam to, to complete the quilt top. Now I am going to add some wider borders onto mine. You could end your quilt right here after putting these side strips on, or you could do a border as well. I'm going to do kind of a little bit of a fun border that is kind of a play on a exposed brick wall in a house. So I'll share with you how I'm going to do that. All right, so before I'm adding on my final border for this quilt, I wanted to show you that I did decide to put a thinner dark border around the quilt as well. So this is that uh, navy blue color that I've been using and I cut it to one and a half inches wide so it's just going to be a very thin border around here but I thought it would help frame the quilt a little bit better before I put on the final border I'm going to put on on my quilt. It is looking so good. I am so excited about how it is turning out. And this final border I think is going to be a lot of fun because I'm actually going to be doing a layout that is kind of like an exposed brick wall inside of a house. So it's going to mimic a brick wall and it's not going to go the whole way around the, the quilt. So what I did was I got my teal color the navy blue and the denim and I cut them into 2.5 inch strips and then I cut down some four and a half inch rectangles and two and a half inch squares and then I'm going to start building the brick wall border. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. So first along both sides of the quilt, the longer side, I'm going to have a border that is alternating three wide of the 4.5 inch squares and then it's going to go to a 2.5 inch square, a 4.5 inch wide rectangle, 4.5 inch wide rectangle, and a 2.5 inch square. And that's going to keep working up the side of the quilt, but then I'm going to taper it off eventually. So when I get about halfway up the, the quilt, I'm going to taper it off. So my next row will be three rectangles, and I'm not gonna put any them in any particular order. It's just going to be completely random. And then I'll need to start with a square
and it's just going to keep alternating like that. So then the next one I'm going to have three. So once I get up far enough along the quilt, I'll show you what I'm going to do to finish it off. But I'm just going to keep building up this border this way. And on the other side of the quilt, it is going to be the same sort of design, but I'm going to work down. So at the top of the quilt on the other side, so let's say this is on the right side, this brick border is starting at the bottom and working up. And on the left side of the quilt, it's going to be working in the other direction. So at the top of the quilt on the left side, I'm going to have three bricks that start this pattern, and then it's going to alternate in the other direction coming down. So I'm going to get the side borders with this brick design put on the quilt and I will show it to you once I get this piece together. All right, so I am working through the brick border for the right side of my quilt because each side the border is going to look a little bit different on my quilt. So I have the brick border here and you can see I have quite a few rows. I have the bottom of the row marked because I want to make sure that these three stay at the bottom. And so you can see here, I'm making the, the border just as long as I, I think it'll look good on the quilt. But what I want to do for the top few rows is taper it off. So you can see I have two bricks and one of my background that I'm going to have, then um, a short and a longer brick and some background and it just tapers off. So I'm gonna sew these together and attach it to this border and since it won't be quite long enough to stretch along the whole side, which is what I intended, I am going to add on a strip of the background fabric that is just a solid strip. So I have that all cut. This cut is 12 and a half inches by width of fabric. And after I attach it to the border, I will measure and trim it down as needed. So I'm going to get this sewn together and then attach it to the side of the quilt and I'll share some pictures so you can see how it will look. All right, so here is how the brick border on the sides of the quilt look. And then it fades into a solid one piece border. And I have that on both sides, but on the left side of the quilt, the brick top starts at the top and comes down. And then on the right side, it starts at the bottom of the quilt and then sort of tapers up. So let me show you how I'm going to work the border of the quilt on the top and the bottom. So it's kind of going to work the same way, but I'm gonna follow the orientation of the bricks and they're going to go to the side. So I'm going to follow the pattern on the side of the quilt and let it follow along the bottom. I'm only going to do three rows. So the border on the top and the bottom are gonna be thinner, which I think will work out because the panel was 
a lot longer than it is wide and I think this will help make it like a a better size having the top and bottom border be a little bit thinner it'll kind of bring it all together I think and this type of border looking like bricks I think will work so I am going to taper the side the top and bottom as well and to do that I'm going to add a 4.5 inch block at the bottom and then one at the middle a smaller 2.5 inch and then just as the side I have a strip of fabric cut to 6.5 inches by the width of fabric that I'll add on to the end and so on trim as necessary to be the width of the quilt so I'll add this on after everything is sewn press it and then trim as necessary to fit the width of the quilt so I'll show you the completed quilt top after I get the top and bottom border on all right so the quilt is all finished and I love how it looks finish is about 70 inches by 80 inches so it is a huge quilt it is a nice size quilt for cozying up and watching movies on the couch and you could even put it on a bed since it is a fairly large quilt you could add more borders around the side you could make the the uh, brick border a little bit bigger to accommodate the size bed that you would like to use it on there's a lot of options with this quilt and I love the colors of it. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to make one or if you already have your supplies to start on yours. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.